This is a deep dive of the Dune Part 2 trailer. Let's get into this. This video is going to contain spoilers, so if you do not wish to be spoiled, please check out another video of mine. We're going to start off with a big epic spoiler. This shot is not a sandstorm, as some people might think. This is actually the Fremen and Lady Jessica riding on top of a sandworm. And this is the worm steersman. And it could even be Paul Atreides himself, played by Timothy Chalamet. Whoever it is, it looks like the most epic squats. You can see the steersman with two maker hooks on either side, hooked onto the scaly surface of the sandworm, and a Fremen tent behind them. And this reminds me of Alex J. Brady's beautiful renditions of the Fremen riding the sandworms, and establishing tents on top of their backs, which just transports me right into the world of Dune, and sends my imagination on a wild journey. This is Princess Irulan using a futuristic dictaphone of some kind to save her narrations, and the circles behind her seem to be some kind of divide or screen, which we saw on the Italian set at the Brian tomb. This is a Harkonnen burning the bodies of the fallen Atreides soldiers, because their armour matches the Atreides armour, and this could be the same burning pile of bodies that we saw in Paul Atreides' vision in part 1. You can see the working filtration system in the helmet, providing a cooling effect or oxygen to the Harkonnen wearing it. Princess Irulan is not talking to the Emperor here. It is more than likely Gaius Helen Mohaim, or the Reverend Mother, and this scene would be to show that Princess Irulan is tied to the Bene Gesserit Order, that she has been trained by the Reverend Mother, and that this is her teacher in the ways of the Bene Gesserit. In the trailer, Irulan asks what if Paul Atreides was still alive, so at this point the Reverend Mother would believe that Paul Atreides is dead. Jessica too. And perhaps at this point, Princess Irulan would be sent on a mission by the Reverend Mother. These binoculars that Gurney Halleck is using are the same kind of binoculars that the late Duke used to observe the Arakeen landscape for the first time with Gurney Halleck upon their arrival to Arrakis. These are not automated guns. Someone is firing them manually. You can see their boots. This seems like a camera shadow. In this action shot, we can see the legs of a Harkonnen sand crawler, the same we saw in Dune Part 1. This is likely a Razia raid, disrupting Harkonnen spice mining. This looks like Chani wearing some kind of communication device, because you can see her wearing a protruding antenna. This bottle is the water of life, a poison which Jessica must drink to become the reverend mother of the Fremen people. And this could be the moment that she changes the water of life and it seems that she has also sniffed spice. And this is her coming back to life, according to the Dune script, which I explained in my Water of Life video, which you can check out. And this Water of Life bottle is reminiscent of glass blowing, a glass blowing utensil, with its long thin water spout. And this is the Water Master presenting the Water of Life, wearing very ornate garments, and it shows off the rich culture of the Fremen people. This reddish yellow wraparound which Paul Atreides wears could come from Fremen sieges because it is a prominent colour there. It could even come from Hara or the hangings in his Yali, which is the room he acquires after besting Jameis in battle. Here we can see Chani wearing a blue head wrap. This is called the Nazoni scarf and it indicates that Chani is pregnant. The Nazoni scarf is defined as the scarf pad worn at the forehead beneath the still suit hood by married or associated Fremen women after a birth of a son. Not only does it indicate that Chani is married, but that she has also given birth to a son. So we may get to see a marriage between Paul Atreides and Chani, and a birth scene. So the Sandrider scene happens after Chani and Paul are either married or associated with each other in the love sense and after Chani has given birth to a son. The gladiatorial scenes could be in black and white because Lady Margot Fenring is recalling what she has witnessed on Gidi Prime to the Emperor because the Fenrings were instructed to go to Gidi Prime and ascertain who would be the new successor to House Harkonnen after Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. So it could be Margot Fenring reporting back to the Imperial Court about her experiences of visiting Gidi Prime and the scenes she witnessed at the gladiatorial arena. 
Another reason for the scene being in black and white is to mask the imagery of blood. And this is a technique that Denis Villeneuve used in his film Polytechnique, where he used black and white imagery to hide the colour of blood. Because it is a technique that Denis Villeneuve has used before, he's comfortable with doing it again and using it for Dune Part 2. It would also be a useful technique to maintain a PG-13 film and reduce the amount of visible blood in the film, keeping the certificate rating as low as possible. The lower it is, the bigger the potential audience from a business perspective. So this could be a very gory scene, but we see the blood splatters in black and white. And it's a similar technique used by other directors like Quentin Tarantino for scenes in Kill Bill. Because Fade Routher's teeth are black here and his tongue is clear, he could be wearing a black mouth guard. These strange figures in the background remind me of a Tarsim-esque design. And they seem like gladiatorial wranglers. I made a passing joke that maybe the human spider proxy should be used in the gladiatorial arena and perhaps it might come true. Maybe the human spider proxy are the lions and tigers of the gladiatorial arenas on Gady Prime and these are the wranglers of the human spider proxy or some other strange beasts. But they definitely evoke nightmarish imagery and almost seem like medieval jesters. This is Lieutenant Lamville of the Atreides, played by stunt coordinator Roger Yuan. At this point he was captured by the Harkonnen and sent to the slave pits. And you can see that time has passed because he's sporting a moustache. So Lieutenant Lamville must have been in the slave pits for several weeks. These are whip marks on Lieutenant Lamville's back, which could mean that Roban himself has tortured him. This is the gender swapped Fremen Shishakli, and these could be intercepted distrans birds and they're essentially animals that can carry messages electronically. So this is a sea lago and it can be any modified chiroptera of arrakis as in any animal that can fly. It would be nice to see a sea lago bat but we may not get to see one. This headpiece worn by Irulan almost looks like chainmail, perhaps signifying war. Princess Irulan's headpiece seems to be based on Paco Rabanne's fall collection from 2020. So perhaps Paco Rabanne reworked this piece specifically for Dune Part 2. And the rest of the outfit may give us an idea of what Princess Irulan's full look is going to look like in the film. This shot is filmed in slow motion, so it could be a dream sequence that Paul has or a vision that he has. Here we can see the Fremen language Shakopsa embroidered into Jessica's clothing. And in this scene we can see Paul fighting his mother or disagreeing with her methodology of exploiting the Fremen people. So this is Paul pretty much showing where his heart lies and that is with the Fremen people and their struggles. In this shot the Fremen fighters are out of focus and then the scene will show them in focus as Paul approaches. This is the Reverend Mother of the Fremen people and this is likely Jessica. These are the same garments that we see Jessica wearing in the teaser of the Dune trailer and we can see the beautiful elaborate costumes worn by the Fremen and it really does show off the richness of their culture. We can see on their costumes bright beautiful jewels and it almost reminds me of the Stargate suits which I love. The symbol on the Reverend Mother's forehead could be a drop of water and two Chris knives. And I think this is the scene at the end of the film because I have heard that Jessica will be veiled when Paul speaks to the Emperor. And this is Paul saying, long live the fighters, or ya haya shuhada. But it's probably going to be long live the fighters because that is the tagline of the poster. It would be great if he did say ya haya shuhada though. The flag that the Fremen are waving is a pan-Arab flag and consists of red, white, green and black. It could even be described as the flag of the Arab revolt. And you can see the Atreides hawk crest is incorporated into the flag. The haze in this scene seems to be filter glass or a generated shield, which is why the sun appears to be blurred. But what do you think? Is Denis Villeneuve masking the blood of the gladiatorial arena? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks to all my Patreons, channel members and subscribers for your support. Check out some of my other Dune content or some of my other popular culture videos here.